Hello and welcome to another how to video. My name is Ditech, C2 at DVS. And before you go any further, please make sure you hit that subscription button. We know you guys are watching and we know you're out there. Do us a favor and just hit that subscribe button. So, what interesting technology we are we going to take a look at in this video, I hear you say? Well, this is the brand new Hike Micro using the Heat Pro sensor technology, thermal presence detector. What is that I hear you say? Because I asked the same thing myself. Actually, this is something that we've been looking at over a couple of years, you know, from previous technology uh, developers, etc. And Hike Vision have combined all of the lovely things that we wanted into this fantastic thermal presence detector. Now, let me just get it out of the box first. So the thermal presence detector itself looks like this. So it's effectively, save that, a thermal camera, low res thermal camera in a unit that gets mounted to the wall. It's got a wall mount bracket with a fly lead that comes in that allows you to adjust this thermal presence detector. Now, I'd install this on a wall, a ceiling, etc., and it is just in the other box some a little bits of additional equipment to fit that together. So it's very, very simple to fit, and we will be fitting this very shortly, actually, in the demonstration room to be able to demonstrate what this product can do for you. So if you take like a healthcare setting, for instance, so like a an old age person's home or a retirement facility, or you're looking after an elderly family member or somebody who's vulnerable perhaps, and you want to check on if they have fallen over perhaps, or if they're in the room still, so there's presence in the room. Now, putting a standard CCTV camera in that area is obviously intrusive. Now, you know, would most people do that? Then no, they wouldn't, because they want to maintain the privacy for that individual. And um, there may be a reason why there is a true CCTV camera in there, and that's a different story. And it may be, you know, that there is a, a requirement to look at this individual for 24 seven in a proper CCTV imagery kind of way. This is designed to navigate all around that privacy concerns, but allow you to see if an individual needs any further assistance. So as it says on the box here, it's actually quite difficult to see, but I will, I will get up and I'll show you. I'll bring it a little bit closer because I think it's important. So obviously, healthcare, elderly, vulnerable people, as I said. So multiple functions, two-way audio. So using the app, I can speak to this device. So if somebody needs assistance, let's say they've fallen over or I feel that they haven't moved and they may be in a compromising position or I want to check that that person's okay. I can use two-way audio through the app, so it's got a good speaker and a built-in microphone. So it allows me to communicate with the person but still maintain their privacy. Don't forget, it's a very low-res thermal image and we'll show you what that looks like. So you maintain privacy because you don't see the true image itself. And again, it's got, it's PoE powered, multiple people exception and it's fall down detection. So if somebody has fallen over, they may not be able to raise the alarm themselves using this product you can see that they've fallen over, it will generate the alarm, you can use the two-way audio, which is really so cool and so, you know, bringing your attention to the fact that somebody may be in need of assistance. Using the two-way audio, you can establish whether actually, yes, they do need uh, some help, and then you can arrange that. So it allows people to be cared for in a more sympathetic, more reactive way, and it gives peace of mind to the individual who's being cared for, but also you as potentially that guardian or person who is looking after that individual, or individuals, depending on how you deploy this. So it adds a layer of detection, of security, to these individuals, which allows a more adaptable lifestyle, is what I would say. And again, um, it comes, it's, that's it basically, heat pro, pipe thermal, you can see the box there, the part number is on this one there. You can see there's two versions in there. We have a one mil and a two mil version. So I'm gonna fit the one mil. It's just the thermal field of view. So obviously depending on the coverage you're looking to do, but it is literally as simple as this. It can be used as standalone. You don't need any additional equipment to this. You don't need to add it to a recorder. Now there may be a security system deployed and you may want to add it to a recorder as part of a combined system, or maybe you need to play something back for you know, just to ensure that when they did fall down and how long that care took to come, or 
you know, for some evidential purposes, you could add it to record. You don't have to. You can power with PoE or 12 volts, and it does have some external, so PoE or 12 volts, and it has the alarm input output on there as well for external third-party device connection. A simple bracket, which will allow us to install this onto a wall, which we're gonna do, and we're gonna do a demonstration of uh, people exceeded the thresholds, because again, if in a sort of critical care function, and somebody can only have a certain amount of people in that area for their own protection or their own, you know, they may be susceptible to, you know, disease or contamination or contagion, etc. And you may need a limitation of how many people are allowed in that area. Again, this device will allow you to do that. It detects the thermal presence and then will generate that alarm. Again, not using the CCTV image, using the highly, ac highly accurate thermal sensor. Now, you know how valuable thermal can be and you've seen recent developments on Hike Vision over the last uh, five, six, seven years, how good their technology is and how beneficial a thermal sensor is compared to a standard CCTV camera. So we've combined all of this technology, all of this want and need into a simple, easy to deploy thermal presence sensor. Now, a big thank you to a couple of people who have pushed me to make this video. Uh, Steve and Simon, two different people, two different needs. Uh, you know who you are if you're watching this video. Thank you very, very much for requesting that. And uh, please do, if you've got any requests, please do keep them coming in. I believe I have you know, personal connections for the want and need of this kind of technology. So it's definitely something I'm gonna be looking at moving forward for you know my own personal needs within my uh, family and wider family setting. So I'm pleased to introduce this to you today and hopefully you'll see some benefit from that. It can be a real sensitive subject why these would be deployed, you know, you know, and sadly some people will need these deployed, but hopefully we can break some of the, I guess, myths or st stigmatism around uh, care and really enable people with the use of technology to offer a more adaptable way of living. So stay tuned, we're gonna go and fit this quickly onto the uh, wallboard up there and then we'll dial into it and show you the setup and what benefit this can have and hopefully you'll see how this can benefit you. Stay tuned folks. Okay, so welcome back. We have fitted the camera now, it's up behind me. If I just show you sort of up there, it's about there. Um, there is a maximum installation height of two 2.7 meters that is fitted at 2.25 meters so it does say in the manual 2.7 meters is the maximum height so just make sure you fit it that or below um most ceiling heights are below that in the uk but if it if your ceiling height is high unfortunately just move it down and put it onto a wall really easy to fit like i said the bracket two minutes put the fly lead in plugged it into a poe switch and i can use it standalone i've added it in preparation to save all the boring stuff which you guys know i've added it to the Hike Connect app already as a standard process, which I'll run through in a minute. And we've added it to a recorder, just added it to a plug and play recorder straight in. So again, it is on both and the mechanism exists for that. So we've web browsed into the unit. Um, again, I didn't show you the activation side. You know how to do that. It's very simple stuff, but we'll jump straight into it. So start live view. You can see when the image comes up, it is a thermal image. It's a low res thermal image. It is in the demo room. I put a table here because I'm going to replicate a bed. It's a high bed, but with elderly people, they normally have single beds, which are around that height. So it's a very good demonstration of the falling out detection, which we'll run through in a minute. But if I walk in front of the camera, you can see very low res image. If I lie on my bed, Hello. You can see that um, the privacy is maintained. Oh, you can see the outline on the thing. God, I must be hot. Um, so that's really cool, actually. You can see the the privacy is maintained because um, you don't see any actual uh, detail in the image, but it is enough to do the VCA analysis. And we'll run through the setup of that shortly. We'll jump straight into it now. So we we'll go to configuration under system. Basic information, that's the model number. That is the current firmware here. I have checked it isn't a later firmware in there, but again, nice and simple. Maintenance, upgrade, default, reset, restore, firmware upgrade. Really, really simple. Um, security, set as required. User management, set as required. Networking, set all your network credentials. DDNS if you're using that, PPPoE, port, NAT, multicast. The advanced stuff, again, SMMP is supported, FTP is supported, email supported, so if you want to get an email instead of an app notification, that's supported. Platform access, 
we support the uh, sorry the internet's a bit slow here today it'll come on in a minute just got to wait for that platform access is the height connect under there we'll come back to that HTTPS is on by default QoS 8201 network service and alarm server video and audio now I set it to 720p video stream. You could lower that if you want, and it would give you a much more grainier image. You may not need it at 720. You may want to choose to reduce that video quality. Um, medium, H.265, maximum bit rate. I mean, you can put it up if you want, but there's not a massive need for it because it's only a low-res thermal camera. The one thing I do change is it says display, VCO in, display the VCA info by the video or by the player. By default, it's by the player. So to get the VCA information, you'd have to export it and use VS player, which would overlay that VCA details of the alarm trigger. I prefer it to be ingrained in the video, so it's a much more obvious way of showing what is going on with the analytics. So I do change that from the default of the player to video. My personal preference, and it will show that detail in the live image on live view and playback. That's my personal preference. I believe it works much better doing it that way. Audio, another little quirk. If you want to do two-way audio from the Height Connect app, which I'll show you in a minute on the video, change it from the default comes as PCM. Now, when you try to initiate two-way audio from Height Connect, it will try to initiate it, but it will fail. That's because the audio encoded format PCM isn't supported. So all I've done is selected the G7221 which is or 7221, which is the standard format. And then input volume, output volume can be adjusted in environmental noise filter. You can turn that on or off. So if it's a noisy background, lots of conversations, you can enable that, which will try to focus on the audio uh, directly and then try and cut that background chatter out effectively. Input volume might change to 100%. So there's a much better chance of hearing clearly what is being said in case they do need assistance. And again, with the output volume, they may be hard of hearing or it may be a noisy environment. I put the volume up. It does have the speaker, like I said, change that to 100% and then just save. Going on to the image itself, really nice and simple. Not much to change in the setting. Like I said, it is a thermal image. So the display settings are related to the thermal setup itself. So you can adjust the brightness, contrast. Sorry, my PC is running very, very slowly at the minute. Um, I think it's doing a lot of background updating. So I do apologize for that. Um, and our Wi-Fi is particularly slow. Uh, brightness, contrast, manual correction, image enhancement. You can change the palette. I choose white hot and you can see that's my personal preference. That's what it comes by default. You can change it to black hot, which it, basically if it's a negative, it flips it. So if I go into there, you get the black hot. It is really down to personal preference, but some palettes do suit um, you know, the, the colour scene more accurately. Like, for instance, this here, you may choose to have the rainbow effect where the red is the hottest. That might be more applicable to your sort of need because everyone is aware and it shows where the heat is straight away. But for me, I'm going to put back to white hot and then you can have the, you know, all the couple of different assessments there. OSD, time, date, and the text on the screen. It's again, very simple stuff. Wait for it to catch up. Again, I do apologise. Put my custom text in there, 24 hour, day, month, year, etc. Move it around, label it, whatever you want. And then privacy mask. If there is areas you want to mask off, like particularly if there was under privacy mask, let's say there was a shower cubicle and that was in view and you really wanted to mask that off because obviously that is a private or maybe the toilet area was in the field of view, then you can effectively give a privacy mask. And now let's say... I draw the area and it needs to be on here. Click save. When you go to the live view, stop drawing. We'll save. If I go back to the live view, you will see that will be on the image. I will take it off because I need that in a minute to show you the analytic working effectively. But it is a way, again, you can give the added privacy, which is important. And maybe some of these installation types, you may need to uh, sort of use that functionality. Sorry, oh, stop it. Waiting for it to catch up now, look. 
you can see that mosaic effect on the screen there. So if I walk in front of this, you can see the mosaic effect. So it gives again the added uh, ability for privacy. I am gonna turn that off, but it is there and you know what it does and the effect it has. But give me two minutes. Isn't it so frustrating? I don't know if you guys are like me and you're trying to do something you know, quickly, efficiently, and things like Windows gets in the way of your life. You know, Microsoft, as much good as you've done, it's also very frustrating. Okay, so we've removed that uh, effect now. Okay, going on to the event. Um, it's got an alarm output, so based on a trigger, you can activate a third-party device. Now, that may be opening a door, unlocking a door for somebody to gain access to that room so they can assist the person. It could be, I don't know, it could be unlocking a medication safe where they need rescue meds. It could it could be anything. It literally could be anything. It could be turning a flashing light or a, or a beacon or a sounder on. But there is an alarm. You set the schedule and then you link the event to it. Smart event. It has the audio exception detection. Now, what you can do with this, it's got a built-in microphone. So if you want to detect sudden increase of sound, you can put the sensitivity and the threshold. And then when you um, start effectively monitoring this, if there is a sudden increase or sudden decrease or audio loss detection, let me just turn it on. You can see the background noise there, and that is the alarm threshold here. So I could raise it, so I could reduce the, so if I raise the sensitivity, you can see now it's not an alarm. And if I shout like that, it goes into alarm. So that is another way to trigger the system where you could have somebody just being able to shout. So the detection may not see them from where they are in the room. So the thermal image they may have fallen behind the sofa, which is not an x-ray, it can't see from a sofa, but they are able to shout. And it's another way that we can raise the alarm using this audio exception. And you can see where the levels and thresholds are active there, orange is an alarm, and that could also be used to generate an alarm. So it's something to bear consideration for. I'm just gonna disable that, because we're not gonna use it. But again, this type of device, this audio detection method could be really valuable for this um, kind of installation or practicality. Storage, it has a built-in SD card. It comes with it, 32 gigabyte, and you can do continuous or you can just do the event recording. Um, nice and simple, we have it set for event recording. Storage management, health tracking. Now this is the area where we set our smart events up. So go to health tracking, go to rule. There is no rule set up. Now it's really cool, I'll just wait for the image to load. We need the image there to do the uh, VCA, of course. Um, but again, click on add rule here, and then these are the type of rules. So you've got out of the room, out of the bed, which is a really popular one, or out of the room if you know if they can't leave the room or they maybe they have dementia and, they, and you want to know if they leave the room, because then you can actually see they maybe they're leaving the house, for instance. Out of bed is a really obvious one. Exit without return, again, could be, again, dementia especially or if they have some mental health and you really need to monitor that, really valuable. Fall down, really practical, and then people overstay alarm. Okay, so when setting the rules, I've had a bit of a play around on this. You may have seen in the previous clip, I paused and actually went away and looked at all the different event types. When you first add a fall down detection, it actually predefines the error for you. Now, I have actually already opened a case with HQ to see if this can be manipulated, but let's add... Um, okay, so if I just draw something in here, for instance, and save that, it actually does nothing. So if you go save, it doesn't actually do anything. There's nothing to sort of, this goes like straight away. If we go fall, uh, fall down, select fall down, and then duration 10 seconds. Okay, we're going to click save. It predefines the area here for you. So that's your fall down area. As it stands, that can't be adjusted. So just be warned that the fall down one is predefined in that area. So the position of the camera needs to be quite key in the area that you want the fall down detection to work. But we've added that. Under alarm schedule, under fall down is 24 seven. Alarm linkage, notify surveillance center. You could trigger the output or upload to the FTP card if you want, click save on that. Again, if we go back, so under the advanced configuration, that's where you set your installation height and your fall height change threshold. That's the distance 
of the threshold that changed. So the default is 80. We'll try it on that. If it needs adjusting to be more or less sensitive, this is where you change it, along with the installation's height. Always make sure the installation height is using a tape measure set correctly. So all we did here, so if I turn the camera around, look, you can see where the thermal present sensor is. We've got a handy Klein tool tape measure. We sell Klein tools, check it out. Simply measure it off the floor, record that height, you're done okay so it's important for accuracy that that is filled in going back to the rule so we filled this one in click save and you can see that uh object there so we're going to add another rule in so another rule we're going to add in is let's say out of the room which is a door by here so we're going to go out of the room so if somebody's left the room so leaving room and then sensitivity 50 and then cross in a to b that's fine so we're going to draw the line and this is the door here. So there is the door and it's going from A to B. So going out of the room, we're gonna click save. Again, alarm linkage should be set for notify surveillance. Take that, click save. So we've got a couple of rules already. So leaving the room, again, there may be lots of reasons why and they go blue when they're in an alarm area. Lots of reasons why you want to know if somebody has left that room, even if it's just for awareness, so you can be aware that there may potentially be an issue. Okay, so I'll add another rule. And again, you can do exit without return. So duration, so 300 seconds. If they haven't returned in that time period, you could report on that. Fall down, people overstay. And again, overstay duration is 300 seconds and the maximum number of people is two. If that was something of a concern. Out of bed, handy one. So we're gonna say out, out of bed. And you can see my bed here, my makeshift bed, sensitivity 50. We're gonna draw either side of the bed here, because that's the floor area. Do that, click save. That's the out of bed area. And an alarm schedule for this one. They're all 24 seven and then out of bed again, load it. That is effectively as simple as it gets. So again, there are the rules that you've set up there and you make those applicable. You can only have one of the same rules. So you can't draw two out of bed areas. You'd have to use two separate cameras for that. So this is one rule. You can have all of the rules, but it's only one of each rule, if that makes sense. So what we'll do now is, so leaving the room, out of bed, we can test these. So we're going to go to live view. And we should have those uh, VCAs on the screen. Just take a slip of coffee a second. It would help if I actually uh, press the live view key. Come on. So there's the rules door, out of bed, and then fall over. So again, it's a thermal camera. I've got a lovely cup of coffee. And lots of people ask me, I'm going to put that way there actually. You can see that's the coffee. Where that red is there, a height connect out of bed. So I've just got an out of bed warning um, because it's detecting me going back out of bed. You can see there, being thermal, even a cup of coffee is detected. So you get a real good indication, if, especially if you've got like hot drinks around the person, you can actually see what they're doing with it. And if there is an issue or, you know, or cold, could, cold is, shows up as black. Or, so I just thought I'd give you a little interesting tip there. So what we're gonna do, is so the out of bed one just went and that keeps notifying me to my height connect here so if i open up my height connect and you can adjust the sensitivity for this so if i go out of bed you can see there i will show you you get an alarm with the alarm with a notification straight to the phone with a image so you can see clearly what's happening so let's ignore that one now out of bed one works really well. Um, we're going to do the fall down one. So I'm going to fall down in front of the bed, which is, you know, it could be, it doesn't have to be a bed, guys. It could be anything, furniture, anything. So I'll fall down and we'll see if the alarm comes through. 10 seconds, don't forget. So I'm going to fall down and, oh no, oh no.
Okay, so we'll do the fall down. What I would say with the fall down, that's the area there, obviously our bed there. It's a likely scenario that this could, in this application, that this is very likely to happen, potentially. You have to be in the scene and then fall down, not fall down and crawl through, if that makes sense. You need to see the person standing to them being on the floor. And again, depending on the distance, the insulation height, etc. But we'll do that. I'll keep my phone on me because uh, I might need to call for help, of course. So we'll just uh, walk through now in the scene. We're just in the scene now, as you can see there. So we're in the scene now. And I go, oh, oh, it's like, oh. 10 seconds. One, two, three. So that actually came through. So I got an out of bed as well. That actually came through, guys. Um, let me just make this a little bit clearer. See if I can make that clearer for you. That came through as a critical alarm. So if I open it up, you heard my phone go. Critical notification. So we've got the out of bed. No, wait for that to sort of uh with the fall down there you can see fall down i'm on the floor it's in the detection area and it does come through as a critical alarm it made that noise i don't know if you heard it and then obviously i can live you and play back and i can do the two-way talk so again very very good um interaction with the app and awareness so the next one we're going to test guys is the so we've done the fall down we'll do the out of bed um, I'll just show you it on my bed and then we'll do the leave in the room. So I'll go and lay on my makeshift bed. So I'm going to lay on my bed here. So this is my bed. So typical, I'd have a cover over me unless I'm a naturalist. This is a terrible bed, day, Absolutely terrible. But then if I got up now and then I wanted to, I need to go to the toilet in the night then. And then, look, there you go, straight away. Um, and I get an out of bed. I get the out of bed like I showed previously, which then shows me, you know, they may be going up to get a toilet, but it may be they're getting up and they don't understand or they're confused or they need assistance, etc. So you can see, look how cool that is. That's my imprint, guys. <laughs> so it's a fake Dave. And the next one is leaving the room. So again, there's our entrance door there. So I'll just go and show that being triggered. That triggered straight away, as you can see. And you can see there's the out of room. So I've left it. Again, I can see what that the person is doing. What I would say, this bed area goes off quite a lot because I'm transiting through the scene. Now, that may be an issue for you. So think about camera placement. It may be that you need to have the camera looking uh, straight on at the bed and it needs to be defined so you don't transit through it. Or you accept that they're going to have some alarms that are actually genuine where the person's moving around or you have it on an alarm schedule to only notify you when you really need to know that out of hours etc or when they're alone in the in the property and um, so all three of those have worked really well like i said again you can do the maximum amount of people there's only myself here but you could put an occupancy and time in there so i could say with more than four people in the area so if i go to configuration and if I go to the alarm or the rule, wait for that to rule. So I think this is super powerful. I'm really, really happy on this device. I can't wait for you guys to get involved with it. And again, I'll show you the two-way talk shortly. And again, if I wanted to do uh, another one so I could add uh, people overstay, the time, and then how many people. I think the maximum is five. I know. And then if there's more than five, six people in that area, um, it would give me an alarm as well. So you've got like the occupancy and time. So yeah, it's really, really powerful in my opinion. Lots of different configurable options. The fall down and the out of bed ones and leaving the room, they're probably the go-to ones in this current climate. And I'm happy that they've got them. You can see how reactive that was to the app. It was literally straight away. So again, you don't need to use a recorder. This is, can be a completely standalone device. You can see the privacy is maintained as we showed there. The one thing I do want to show you as well is like through the app, and it's difficult because I'm in the same room as the app, of course. But if I go to live view, 
So on the current app there, you can see that's the live view. I can just do a talk down, starting two-way audio. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Do you need assistance? You can see. Two-way talk. I can hear them. They can hear me. It's loud enough for them to get the attention and to be reassured. Most of the scenarios and applications is the reassurance that somebody is there, seen it, assistance is on his way, or you can talk to them to calm them down. That's a massive part of this integral deployment is the, the aftercare that that person would get from the initial deployment of this technology. So two-way talk directly from the app. Again, so intuitive, so easy to use. Anyone can interact with this. It's very cost-effective. You know Hype Vision. They make an edge leading technology at a very good price point. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video, guys. I don't need to tell, I don't need to do any more because we've done it all. The technology will sell itself. That's how good this device is. I'm confident that you guys out there go and look at what your customers need you know, residential care, homes, you know, healthcare settings, etc. And if you don't need the fall down thing, you could still leave people exiting the room. Maybe they're mandated to be in that room and you want to know if somebody leaves that room for whatever reason and it isn't a healthcare situation. We could also use a thermal with the privacy that it gives you to do that. Any questions, please do contact your DVS sales rep. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I did. I enjoyed going to sleep on that bed. Really, really terrible bed. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Stay safe.